Welcome to County Office, your ultimate guide to local government services and public records. Let's get started. Why didn't Americans create an executive branch in the Articles of Confederation? The Articles of Confederation, adopted by the Continental Congress on November 15, 1777, and ratified by the states in 1781, formed the first framework of the United States government. This document created a league of friendship among the states, preserving their sovereignty and independence. One of the key features of the Articles of Confederation was the absence of a separate executive branch and judicial branch. The national government was centered on a single legislative branch known as the Congress, which consisted of a single house. The decision to omit an executive branch was largely driven by the fear of a strong central government. The states did not want to create a powerful central executive that could potentially undermine their independence and autonomy. This fear was rooted in the recent experience of British rule and the desire to avoid any form of centralized authority that might resemble a monarchy. Under the Articles, the legislative body, Congress, held most of the power, but it was structured in a way that reinforced state independence. Each state had one vote in Congress, regardless of its population, and any significant actions required the approval of a majority or, in some cases, nine out of the 13 states. The lack of an executive branch meant that there was no single figure or office to enforce federal laws, conduct foreign policy, or manage the day-to-day -day affairs of the government. Instead, Congress itself had to handle these responsibilities, which often led to inefficiencies and a lack of cohesive leadership. The weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation, including the absence of an executive branch, were significant factors that led to the Constitutional Convention of 1787. This convention uh, ultimately resulted in the drafting of the United States Constitution, which included a separate executive branch with defined powers and responsibilities. To learn more, check out these links, which you can click in the description below. And feel free to comment your questions. We're here to help. Thanks for tuning in to our video. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. See you in the next video.